Hi, we're FPGA Game Studio, and our project is a video game called RPG Escape. At a high level, our game takes in user input from a keyboard connected to the FPGA. This input is then converted into signals that drive the finite state machine of the game and the game engine. Within our modules, we load in sprites from BlockRAM and display them using a VGA controller. Our finite state machine is used to, to decide what to display on our screen. There are separate modes for the start of the game, the exploration part of the game, the game battles, and the end screens. A large part of our project involved de detecting collisions between the player sprite and the objects within the game. These included the walls of our maze and the enemies on the map. Here you can see example Verilog code for how we detected a collision between the player sprite and the enemy sprite. We had to create a separate collision detection module to detect when the player sprite interacted with the walls of our maze. Our game's maze was generated using a 20 by 15 matrix of ones and zeros, where ones represented a wall and zeros represented an area that the player could walk on. To detect collisions between the player and the maze wall, we determine which block of the maze the player would be in based on their current location and their directional input. If they were going to enter a wall block, then the player movement was halted. Otherwise, they could continue walking. This is a picture of the layout of our maze, where the blue squares represent walls, and the red squares represent enemy locations on the map. Here is what our maze looks like when we use the sprites loaded in from block. This is a sample of the Verilog code we use to detect a collision between the player sprite and- We are the FPGA Game Studio, and we have have started up a game called RPG Escape, where your character needs to escape from a maze and defeat thugs in order to do so. Here is the maze. Is you use the arrow keys to, to, to move your character around from, from spot to spot. Once you, if you collide into a wall, your enemy, the player cannot go beyond them. Next, when you collide with an enemy, a battle starts. So, as you can see with the battle screen, there's the HP of the enemy and the player, with the enemy's HP on the top and the player's on the bottom. And over here, on the left is the player's baseball bat and sword power points, and on the right is the enemy's. The enemy is controlled by a second player. So, for example, if you press, it, if you press J for punch, and you can you can reduce the HP of the player by 10. If you press punch for, for the player, you can reduce it for the enemy. Then if you press W for the sword for the player, it reduces it by 40. Basically, the, the keys are, are punch, kick, sword, baseball bat, sword for the player, ASDW. And it's the same for JKLI for the computer, for the enemy. Sometimes a move can miss, though, and the stronger it is, the more likely it is to miss. And for, and for when a move misses, it's, the power points are still deducted anyway. Okay. As you can see, the enemy can no longer swing his sword now that's been used up. So now, now we'll, we'll just have the enemy defeat the player just to show game over. Game over. Okay. Now let's reprogram the game and, and we'll start start from the beginning. Do you want to pause? Back. Now, now we're going to show the foe being defeated by the player. Okay. Note that the punch, kick, the punch, kicks, baseball bat, and sword take away 10, 20, 30, and 40 HP each time. And for, for every subsequent battle, the enemy's HP goes up by 10, except for the last battle, which is where both the player and the enemy have 190 HP. And then if you want to like stop it here. Oh. Attack! Here it goes. 190, 190. And that's what happens when the player defeats the final foe.